In this video, we'll discuss the mobile application for GBV IMS Plus. In developed and stable settings, it's challenging to obtain reliable data on gender-based violence. Humanitarian contexts where institutions, infrastructure, and human resources may be weakened or compromised pose further challenges. Ethical and safety issues around data collection, management, and sharing are paramount to ensuring survivor safety and recovery. In some settings, using traditional paper-based information management systems invites opportunities for breaches of confidentiality, theft of sensitive data, and erodes opportunities for analysis to improve programming. This includes settings that may be prone to casual intrusion by soldiers, rebels, or community members, and settings where we do not have static offices or where services are provided in mobile or changing settings. The GBVIMS Plus mobile application was developed to respond to this type of setting allowing for caseworkers and other frontline staff to have a safe way to track incidents and individual survivors and their progress as they go through the case management process. Prior to using the mobile application, devices will need to be formatted in order to ensure safe and ethical use of the application. In addition, the application will need to be uploaded on mobile devices. For more information about mobile safety and device management, please contact the Primero team. Now let's go through what the application looks like. Once the application is launched on the mobile device, the user will be asked to perform a few key tasks. First, to enter the username and password. These are the same ones that you use for the web application. And then you need to update your web URL, at least the first time you use it. This URL should be the same one that you access Primero on the web-based platform. Then click Login. After logging in, the application will redirect to the main menu. It's worth noting that for security reasons, if the application is not used for some time or closed to use another application, the user will be automatically logged out and will need to log in again. This is for safety. In order to create a case, first you'll select case on the main menu, then the case list will be displayed. Click on the plus icon on the bottom right of the page to open the short case form. Then the short forms will be displayed. This allows the user to enter a case record with basic information only. You then enter the information for the case and you can save the information by clicking on save in the upper right hand corner. When selecting information from a long list, a text field will be available to search for specific values. On some devices, the keyboard will automatically show up. If it's not needed, please click on the black button to hide the keyboard. To enter information more than what's on the short form, click Show More Details. This is what these steps look like. You can see here the plus sign to start a new case. And you can see here where information is entered and how to save it. This is a sample of what the data entry looks like in the app. You can click on a question and choose from the options or enter free text. You can also select case on main menu and then the case list will be displayed. In the list view, click on any case to review the details or to add new information. In order to create an incident, on the case view page, click add incident to create an incident related to the case. This looks like a piece of paper with a plus sign next to it. Then click on the pencil icon to enter information. Once your information is entered, you can hit save. And once saved, you can find a link to the incident in the cases section under action plan. So you can see here the pencil icon at the bottom. And this is how you enter the incident information from the case. The next screen grab will show you the incident link so you can see that an incident is linked to the case. It's important to remember when you're starting a case to always select the case status as open if you want to be able to see the records on your platform. Once you have an existing case or incident, you may want to edit it as new information comes up. To do that, 
click on the full form of the case or incident record, then click on the pencil icon on the bottom right. You might also want to search for existing cases or incidents. To do that, in the list view, click on the magnifying glass to navigate to search. Enter any keywords for specific search cases. You can also sort cases. On the list view, click on the order column on the top of the page to sort the cases. Now let's talk about syncing information. In order to sync the mobile device with the web application, there's a few steps you need to follow. First, select synchronization on the main menu. Then the synchronization page will be displayed. Then click on the synchronization button and the syncing information will appear. Then a pop-up will be displayed showing the progress. After records in the mobile application are synced to the web application, the mobile app will automatically pull records which are marked for mobile. In order to have more information about how to mark and unmark for mobile, please see the video on that topic. If the user begins data entry on the mobile device, they can sync that data to the web server. Once synced to the web server, the user can continue to do data entry on the web application. And data will only update on the mobile if the user selects mark for mobile. Users will have to remember to mark for mobile on the web if they want the record to sync back to the mobile. If the user starts the data entry on a computer or laptop on the web app, then select mark for mobile and they can finish data entry on the mobile device and sync it back to the web server when they're finished. Here's what those steps look like. You can see the synchronization option on the main menu and then the sync button. You can see the progress bar and then you can see here that the syncing was successful. To see our case or an incident from the web app on the mobile, if you begin the data entry on the mobile device, just remember to sync to the web server. Let's talk about deleting information from the mobile application. You might need to delete cases or incidents if there's a reason to believe the data may be accessed by someone unauthorized, like a casual intruder. Or if you no longer need that information on the mobile device and it's been fully synced to the web application. In this case, you can delete the cases that you've already synced to the web application. To do this, on the list page, click on the trash icon in the upper right-hand corner. Then select the cases to delete. Select delete. You can see here that records that aren't synced will appear in a gray color, and these ones can't be selected to delete. The reason for this is to prevent data loss. After pressing delete, there will be a confirmation page, and you can click yes. Here's what that looks like. You can see the list here and the trash icon at the top. Once you've selected that, in the second screenshot, you can see that one of the cases is gray in color. It means that, that one can't be deleted because it hasn't been synced to the web application. The other ones that have the blue check mark can be deleted because they've been synced. And you can see here the warning pop-up that appears that asks if you no longer need this information on your device. You can click yes, and they'll be deleted. For those cases and incidents that are not synced, and in instances when the data is at threat of being stolen, you can delete the entire application. There are two options for deleting the application. The ap application can be deleted to protect survivor confidentiality. Uh, and one option to do that is to press and hold the app icon until a trash icon is displayed on the screen then drag the app to the trash icon and confirm app deletion. Here's how to do that. Another option is go to settings, click on apps or applications, select the mobile app icon, which will be called Rapid Reg or Primero, then click on the uninstall button, then confirm and delete the app. <laughs> 